And hello, everyone, and welcome. I am Jean with Captain Stitches, and this is our mini series for hand quilting step by step part two. And Danielle with Danielle Stitchery is with me today because, as you know, I am teaching her to hand quilt, and we are excited to have. All of you that are also uh, wanting to learn to hand quilt or maybe just brush up on your hand quilting skills because you have been hand quilting or are interested in some tips, tips and techniques that you might have not known about along the way. But welcome. It is great to have you with us this evening. And I noticed that Vicki Rumsey is with us this evening. Hello, Vicki. It is great to see you. You've been in there a little while. I don't know if you're still there. You may just be waiting and, and not on yet. But And Jim has joined us again. It's great to see you again, Jim. Enjoyed having you with us on Monday. And I see you are back for Wednesday night. Great to see you. Kathy is with us. Tracy is with us. And uh, Vicki, Kathy, and Tracy are all members of the channel and the Stitching Friends, as is Danielle. And of course, myself, I guess I wear the crown, but <laughs> as we always talk <laughs> about. <laughs> but good evening to you. It's great to see you uh, popping in and, and joining us this evening. I know there's a few of you that have been excited that I am doing this mini series. So hopefully... I was I was thinking today I'm not I'm not sure that we'll actually finish the series this evening. We might have to have one more week. We will see how it goes, but or it, it will just be a brief um catch up week on showing progress and seeing if there are any any questions after everyone has had their homework <laughs> and and may have a few questions arise but last let me just have a quick overview of what we went over last week and I apologize for the camera in front of my face but you know you got to do what you got to do to get the the shot that you need and I realized that the other one is moving because I am in a rocking chair <laughs> and I and I have a tendency to rock. So sorry about the movement there. But and good evening. I think I said good morning to, to most of you. It is evening. I'm used to being live in the morning. I'm sorry. <laughs> good evening, Letitia. It is great to see you also. But last week we went over marking your um quilt pattern design that you want to do on your quilt. And we um did that in four segments so that we could have four different um forms of hand quilting that we will be working on and we also then went over layering it the top the backing and the batting and then pin basting it and placing it in your hoop correctly and I also see that Lorraine is with us this evening welcome welcome Lorraine and stir hello stir she is with us this evening also Happy to be here, and I'm happy that you are here. So, so this evening, we are going to have a rocking good party. <laughs> because, <laughs> as you know, I use the rocking stitch um, when I hand quilt. There are a few different methods. There is called the, the stab stitch, which that is sometimes also called as the down ouch up stitch because you're just sticking one stitch through at a time hitting that bottom finger and then pushing it back up through the bottom to the top and it's one stitch at a time that's not the method that I use normally there's you know a time and a place for that also but but that's not what I do and some kind of do a side to side more like a running stitch instead of a hand quilting stitch for their hand quilting but what I will be teaching and what I use is the rocking stitch. Mm -hmm. And it is called the rocking stitch because you rock your needle back and forth. Oh, my hand's showing in both places there as I look. <laughs> but, and I think Danielle is excited and ready to go. And um, what we are going to start with is the, the square that you marked with the grid on. That is the one that we will be doing first because that is straight stitching and that's the easiest to start with. And you are going I am going to go ahead and change my camera angle to be for my tabletop. All right. 
We're going to be hand models this evening. <laughs> yes. I like how your pins are going in a circle. <laughs> <laughs> right. And that was not even planned. Oh, I know. I know. Because it wasn't in the hoop when you did that. No, I was just, I would just put my hand down and put them wherever I could find. Now you don't want to take all those out, Danielle. Just take them yeah, out. Yeah, I'm just doing long. just like in this area right here. Yeah. You're going to be starting in the, on the longest diagonal that is kind of from the corner to the corner. That's the one that you're going to start with. So you want to remove your pins that are closest to that. And the nice thing about um, as you quilt more, you can remove more and more of those pins because, of course, your hand quilting is, is taking the place of the pins and you can remove those as you go and get those out of your way. But And Vicki is saying hello to you, Danielle. Hey, Vicki. How are you doing, hon? And how is everybody else doing tonight? How many of you are already hand quilters that are in the chat? And how many of you are just hoping to catch a few pointers or, or brush up on your hand quilting skills? And Carol Rousseau is with us also this evening. And yeah, we're all lit up in green again. I love to see that. Green means you're, you know, a, a member of the channel. And there is Debbie. Hello and good evening, Debbie. It hey, is Mama Debbie. Debbie. She is my sister, Debbie. Not my real sister, but my sister. <laughs> Hi, Auntie like, here, Debbie. I'm here. Phew, I thought I was going to miss it. Hi, Jean. Hey, Danielle. Good evening, everybody. And Debbie Williams is here. Good evening, Debbie. And she says hello to myself, Danielle, and everyone in the chat. Debbie is someone that actually um, got to learn to hand quilt in person from me. So, which I was going to to say something about that too. That reminds me of that. And uh, Vicky says that she's doing great, Danielle. Cindy S is here. I'm a beginner hand quilter. Okay, awesome. I love beginner hand quilters. And Jim says he is looking to learn. I've never hand stitched. Well, you are Jim, missing me out, neither. Jim. <laughs> <laughs> And Kathy says, how big of a quilt do you do in the that hoop, Jean? Oh, I can do a king size quilt in this hoop. No problem. <laughs> but yeah, which mine is a is is a lap hoop, but whoops, forgot my needles were laying on there. But um, even if it's not a lap hoop, you you can do any size quilt in the hoop. So and Tracy says she's self-taught, always looking for new ways. Awesome. And Jean, my other Jean, Roar, is here this evening. I don't know how to even hand stitch a binding. Okay. Well, you would be the type that I would love to teach, Jean. <laughs> but and what I was going to say about this, this is actually my first time teaching hand quilting, not in person. <laughs> There, you know, it is quite different to try and teach stitching using a camera angle, you know, and that you can't actually see in that camera while you are doing because you have to look at your stitching. So it's it's a little bit different than being able to teach in person. But I have taught several people and groups um, how to hand quilt uh, over the, the past years. So this is a little a little different experience for me as well as for those of you joining. The reason that I have these needles here and when I start actually the stitching, I will change and um, spotlight the view so that you can see this better. I'll remove myself so it'll just be Danielle and I and that should enlarge it a little bit better. If I have to at times, I will spotlight it so you can see it better. But um these are the needles, and I'll lift that up there so you can see, that are my favorite that I use the majority of the time. And I have shared these before and the link for the company that you can get them from. You can get these from the Colonial Needle Company, and I will leave that in the description box because these are very, very good hand quilting needles. 
and that is what I normally use. I have tried many, and I keep going back to those because those are my favorite. And good evening, Christine. Christine is with us also this evening, and she is also one of the Stitching Friends and member of the channel. So I think, Danielle, it's ready. Are you ready, Danielle? Sure. Yeah, I got to have that thimble I see laying there on your finger. <laughs> uh I, I got it right here. I've also still got to put a knot in the bottom of my thread. I just don't remember how to do it. You don't remember how to do it. Well, all of mine are, are threaded on here, but I can show you real quickly. Let's see. Okay. And plus, I'm trying to get my finger in the thimble with a Band-Aid on. Okay. <laughs> we will show that again. Let me get some thread here. Sorry about that, Mom. That's all right. No problem. You just want to see if I can thread it live tonight after we had that little discussion of... <laughs> you know, if you're going to challenge me on the rock and stitch, I'm going to challenge you on threading a needle. Oh, <laughs> you're a pro. You got this. <laughs> yeah. It's like sometimes it works easy. Sometimes it doesn't. But Hey, I... Vicki. Little. Um, Mama Jean has me using Coach and Clark hand quilting thread, and it is a she's asking for the weight, and I don't know where to find the weight at. It's just uh, all hand quilting thread. If it says hand quilting, they're all the same weight. I don't okay. know the specific, it's just hand quilting thread. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, all it's I see on here is it, the... and it's vast, so. I was going to say, all I see on here, it's saying it's hand quilting, and it says the, how many yards is on the spool, but let's see if I can get that on there. It's probably about a... There you go. That's what I have here. <laughs> okay. I can't see because my light's in the wrong place to get this. <laughs> see? It's like... I may be able to figure it out. There's a little kink in the end of the thread. I'm going to cut that okay, off. Okay, so... I think I do this. Let's try this again. And when you are threading your needle, there is a difference because there is a twist on threads and you always want to make sure that you are, okay, I am not going to be able to get, because my light is in the wrong position. Okay, that didn't work. Come on, come on, come on. I just threaded five or six needles without having a problem at all. Danielle, I don't know, buddy. Okay. Oh, we're gonna I got it. I got it. I got it. You got it? I got it. You do as you have it and you take, I am going to show. You are okay. going to take the end of your thread and you lay it across your needle. Oops, got my hand in the way. You pinch it with your thumb and your index finger, wrap it twice, then pinch it in there again and take it. Oh, yeah. And since it's not threaded, it didn't work. But then you slide it all the way to the end and you end up with your knot. Sorry about that. But we don't want to take an hour getting that threaded. <laughs> stir stitch. She's done the stir stitch. No clue what I was doing, but the small little projects I've done have stayed stitched together over the years. Going pro tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh, and Janine is with us. Hello. Welcome to you. Sorry. And hey, Janine is here. I'm sorry. And Julia didn't mean to miss you, <laughs> but it's like, okay. Uh, and Maritza is here. Welcome to you. Guide the eye of the needle to the thread. Yeah. Well, that's not the problem, Giovanna. It's that the thread is thick. <laughs> didn't want to go. Uh, believe me, I have, I have, I have threaded millions of needles. It's, you know, when you're live that it doesn't want to work. <laughs> But, okay, so we are going to get started here. I am going to remove. Okay. I can't figure out how to remove myself. Okay, we're going to do this a different way. I'm spotlighting you.
And then I'm going to go up and get the other one. And spotlight that also. And I am the one with the B on it. <laughs> we, we look the same down there right now, Danielle. I'm the green thimble. I'm the, yeah. I'm the one that you can see the finger. And I also have a tip on my index finger that I use to help pull the needle through. But, and I might have to just for the start, uh, just um, spotlight myself there for a minute because I see that this is not a very close showing up. So just to get started, I am going to just spotlight myself here a minute so we have a closer up view there we go and what you are going to do is you are going to start your needle away from that very top where you will be taking your first stitch and so you want it about a half a needle's length away and you are going to put that between the layers of your top and your batting and your backing and you are going to bring your needle tip doopy doopy, right up to where you want that very first stitch to start. And then you are going to pull, and with your little quilter's knot on the end, you are going to pull and you will hear a pop, and that knot will be hidden between the layers of your quilt, so it is not showing. I put saliva on the thread. Well, <laughs> I wet it. <laughs> yeah, I, I do that occasionally. And sometimes it's easier to actually um, wet the eye of the needle instead of the thread. And it will attract the thread to the needle that way. Oh, yeah, I never thought about doing that before. And there is also a beveled. There's a wrong side and a right side to the eye of the needle. So if you are trying continually to get the thread through and it won't go through, turn it around and there is just a little bit of an op more of an opened beveled edge on the one side that is not, you cannot see it with your eye, but it is there and it will thread easier. And Jim is asking, do you always use a hoop for the quilting? I do. That again is, you know, um, the preference of the person. There are a lot of people that quilt without a hoop. I always quilt with a hoop. And I quilt either with a hoop. I also have a large uh, lap frame. I mean, a large quilt frame. I'm using my lap one right now. But okay, what you are going to want to do is you are going to put your needle at the length of stitch, which um, when you are beginning stitching, you are not going to get a small stitch. So don't even try to get that small stitch. Just make sure that you're getting a consistent stitch length. But you are going to Put that needle straight through and you are going to feel that with your index finger underneath. The minute you feel that, you are going to push up and you can see me pushing on the bottom. You are going to push up with your index finger and at the same time, you are going to rock that needle back just like the back of a rocking chair and you are going to push down with your thumb. And this is where if you have fingernails, they come in handy because that is going to help regulate your stitch because that will pop that needle back up to the top layer. And that is the first part of the rocking stitch because you see our rocking chair is still in the backward motion. You are going to bring your needle just a bit forward, rock your rocking chair back up, try to move my finger out of the way there. That needle goes right down into the fabric in front of the stitch that you just did. And you rock it back again, push up with the underneath finger, and I'm pushing down with my thumb. My thumbnail is guiding that needle tip to come up. And I load about five or six stitches at a time. You will want probably to only put three, Danielle, or you might not get your needle through. <laughs> I'm still trying to get my knot to come through that first layer. Or okay. first thing to get it locked in there. There it goes. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, you're fine. I can, I can see you up in my corner. I don't know if other people can see you, but I can see you up there. I should have been watching. Make sure that you were <laughs> on the on the same page as me. 
You are completely fine. I was watching, so. Yeah. And Giovanna says she never thought of that, wetting the needle. Yeah. Or wet your, your other finger and then wet the back side of the, the needle. And it it will, for some reason, draw the thread to the hole. Howdy, howdy, howdy. How is everyone doing tonight, says Andrea. Welcome, Andrea. It is great to see you also. And she is also one of the members of the Stitching Friends and the channel. So are you ready? And I will go through that again. Yeah. You've got your, your needle through the layers and ready for the first stitch, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. So now you are going to take, and your first stitch, for some reason, always comes out, no matter what you do, just a little bit larger than the others. It's just the, the physics of the needle. But you're going to stick that needle down your stitch length away from the other one, straight up and down. You're going to push up with your index finger on the bottom. You're going to rock your needle back, just like the back of the rocking chair. And you're going to push down with your thumb on top at the same time. And that brings, and if you don't like the size yes. of the stitch, take it out and start over because mine was just a little bit big. But that's going to bring your needle up and you're going to advance it the length of your stitch. Rock it back up, put your chair back in the upright position and push down again. You will feel that tip of that needle immediately as soon as you feel the tip of the needle. Rock your rocking chair back again, push down with your thumb, get your stitch length, and rock it back up. And that is called loading your needle also with the number of stitches. Like I said, being a beginner, you probably won't want to load more than three at a time. I normally load about five or six, depending on on how I feel that day. <laughs> and then you push, before you pull, push all the way to the end of the eye of the needle so that you have more of the needle to grip and pull on. And mine's sliding right now instead of coming through. That's why you have the little tip on your finger. And I think you can see those stitches there. And I think I bent my needle. That does happen. <laughs> That does happen. Yeah. Don't don't rock too hard. Yeah. And, I, I was pushing a little too hard, I think. Yeah. And don't, like I said, when you're not used to doing it yet, don't don't try to load too many stitches on it at once. But as you go, you see this, and I'm just as she catches up, I'm just showing how that that rocking motion just just keeps rocking back and forth. And you will also notice it will look kind of like I'm going sideways. But if you see me in both views at the same time, I am always quilting toward myself. And that doesn't put the stress on your hand. If you quilt sideways, I'm trying to show you, you see what you do with your wrist. If you're quilting sideways, it puts your hand and your wrist in a stressed position. And that is not not good. Um, you'll get pain in your wrist and your hand by doing that because they're both in an awkward. If you stitch towards yourself, see how it's totally relaxed. It's in the normal normal position. So you always want to be quilting toward yourself instead of, so of course, when you're quilting on a frame, you have to do that at times because you can't turn the frame. You can turn the hoop. But, I got to grab a different well, needle because I completely bent that one all the poopies. <laughs> bent needles are not fun. No, I didn't realize how strong I was. <laughs> <laughs> you will also find out, Danielle, at times your needle will flick. You'll be doing that first stitch and the needle will flick. Sometimes it will unthread and flick and you'll have to find your needle, <laughs> but it does, it does, it does happen. Yeah. I can't, I kind of think I just paid myself back for having you thread, try to thread a needle on live. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. Cause now I got to rethread this and I'm like, okay, this was much easier before I came on camera. And Debbie says, I have a tendency to slightly bend the needle. Well, you know, it depends on the needles you're using because some needles are not as strong. 
And the longer the needle, the more apt to bend. The smaller the needle, the stronger it is, and the less apt to bend. The uh, smaller the needle, the shorter stitches you can also get. And so that also has a lot to do with it. Do you okay. have a symbol on your underside hand too? No, I do not. I have, and if you can see, you can see, you can see where I poke it. I'm trying to get, there's not a lot of light in that camera, but you can see where it, it ends up getting, you know, quite a few needle pricks on it. Um, it doesn't look too bad right now, but that can end up looking pretty bad at times. You just give it a rest. I will alternate when this gets sore between my index finger and the middle finger. And yeah, but no, some people, they don't use a thimble, but there are pads and other things that you can use on that finger. I do not like using anything on the underside finger because that is how I feel. And I know exactly when that little beveled end of the tip of that needle has come through. And that's how you could keep a consistent short stitch because that is right when I push it up. And if I had something on my finger, I would not feel that. And uh, Katie Crafts is here. Good evening, Katie. It is great to see hey, you. Katie. Only stay for a few minutes. That's great. Just thank you for popping in. It's great to see you. And Mona did what is here? She says hello, Jean and everyone. Great. Hey, Mona. Um. I think, you know, everybody, no matter what, at some point in time and after using, you know, the needle for a while, you are you are going to bend your needle. I mean, that's just, you know, it's going to happen. And that is when it's time, okay, get rid of that needle and start with another one. And your needle will get dull too. So just like the needles on your sewing machine, you need to switch out the needles with your hand quilting. And I am using colored thread. I would use normally use thread that matches the fabric, but I was hoping that you'd be able to see the stitches better by using a colored thread. So in honor of Danielle, I am using, going the one direction on this grid, I am doing using a lavender thread. Ooh. Going the other way, just so it would distinguish it a little bit, I am using a deeper purple thread because that is um, Danielle's favorite color. For those I of you, love me some purple. And so you know, I, I really, me and these needles are not getting along. I just spent another one. What are you doing, Danielle? I'm trying to push with a with a thimble, and I keep. I think I'm put trying to force too hard. You're trying to go too because I can't too, feel are what you I'm trying to go too far with the needle before pushing it back up. I don't know what I'm doing. Like I got some stitching here done. Okay. Just for Hang whatever on. reason, I keep pushing a little too hard. When you're when you're ready, I'm going to spotlight you instead so I can see what you are doing. Okay. You Wait, are now, she did not you are now, spotlighting you. You are now spotlighted instead of me. Let's okay. See. So yeah, um exhibit A and exhibit B. Oh my goodness, you I mean you didn't just bend them, you <laughs> bent them. <laughs> yeah, I I I was a brute. What I've never I had one. I've never had one bent quite that bad. <laughs> I think the problem is the fact that I can't feel what I'm doing with the thimble, and so I'm pushing harder, trying to force it. Christine says her sewing room is lavender, and Judy is asking if I am using a special thread. Uh, there are many. I'm using hand quilting thread. You can use any thread that says hand quilting but it needs to be a hand quilting thread my favorite is um guterman which whoops i'm not highlighted anymore <laughs> i'm just gonna i'm laying it here to show you and i'm not there we've got danielle spotlighted right now but uh I will I will get back to showing you that duty as soon as I see and try and find out why Danielle is bending her 
bending her needle. It's because your daughter's a brute. <laughs> Which when Danielle says she's my daughter, for just so you know, she's not my real daughter. I have adopted her as my daughter. So <laughs> I'll eat when I'm done. I'll eat when I'm done. Thank you. Okay, so put my needle in. I can yeah. barely feel it on the tip of my finger underneath. Okay. I'm bending back well, towards the wall. Now you need to have what you might be doing. Okay. Yeah. Get your get your thumb down there before you bend it bend it back so it has, you know, something else stabilizing it. So I got it coming out that way. Okay. And it's the second stitch with, that I keep bending it on. So I'm push it back that okay. way a little bit. You might want to loosen. If you're bending it, you need to loosen your fabric in your hoop. Yeah, so it's right here where you've I use it. it you've, got, bend you've got it. Yeah, you've got your your fabric's too tight. It's not allowing you to rock it. Okay. So I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I, I I'm like either I use I either I don't know my own strength or what. You don't need to. Yeah, you don't need to <laughs> loosen your hoop. Just push. Don't loosen. Don't loosen the screw. Oh, Just okay. Push your hand and force your fabric to go down a little bit more on your to loosen it. Now push from the bottom so I can see how loose it is. Now you should be okay. Okay. So I'm like, I did not know what I was doing. I'm like, I'm rocking. Right. See, if it's if it's too tight in there, yeah, that's putting that's putting pressure on your needle and it it it's not allowing it to make the stitch. Okay. Okay. So now so I can answer Judy's question before I forget to go back. Okay, this is me now. This is a uh, Guterman hand quilting thread. It is my my thread of choice, but Coates and Clark, they're new because it's not the same as what their old threads used to be. They have really got good thread now, but they have a hand quilting thread that is just fine. And you can get that at Walmart. Just make sure that you get the one that says hand quilting. They don't have as many different colors and selection along that way, but it is it is just fine for hand quilting. Um, YLI is a good hand quilting thread. There's many of them out there, but Guterman is my choice, my my thread of choice, and I always get it when it's on sale. <laughs> but so I hope that answered your question on that. And let me see. Andrea says, Mona says she can't see Danielle. Not right now, you can't. That was her that our hoops look the same <laughs> so that was danielle that i was seeing what she was doing wrong that she was bending her needle mona yeah if you see a green thimble it's me and when, or I, when i'm showing because if i have both of us in there you can't get the close-up but i'm going back and forth and and adding her in from time to time but i will add her with me right now Add spotlight there. Now we're both there. See, you can't tell the difference except for the thimble. <laughs> oh, well, you might get used to the different hands, but okay. And Debbie says, I asked a question back up. Oh, wait, well, you, instead of me going back up, you need to ask the question again, Debbie. I can't see it. So just ask the question again. I'm sorry. And Andrea says, I have hand quilted for many, many years, and I have never been able to get those tiny stitches. The older I get, the harder it gets, too. You are an awesome teacher, Jean. Oh, well, thank you, Andrea. And Gladys, the confident quilter, is here with us this evening. Welcome. Hey, Gladys. Welcome. Yeah, that's what I just told her, Mona. She had her, she had her fabric in there too tight. I always say it has to be. See how loose mine is? You can see my hand going up and down. It's just like if you have a cat at home and they lay down to take a nap, you know, it's like, okay, they laid in the middle of your hoop for a while and, and made it go down. That's how I say it. It should be loose. So you don't have the stress there. Um, and Andrea says, I use crochet thread or embroidery floss for big stitch. Yes, I do. Also, I use a crochet. I use crochet cotton size 10 is what I use for big stitch quilting. And she, Mona says, I use coats for my hand EPP. 
Yes, you want to use a strong thread for for hand stitching. Well, there's yes, a difference. I've only broke this thread once that. so far. You what? As I've only broke this thread once so far. You broke your thread. Okay. Yeah, the first time I was trying to get the eye to go, or not the eye, but the knot to get embedded, I pulled too hard and it broke the thread, so I had to re knot it. I can see you're getting that rocking motion good there. Very good. Thank you. It helped to loosen that up in your hoop, didn't it? <laughs> it did. I yeah. was like, wow. I'm like, man, I could actually move the, the needle. question about out. changing your needle size in the middle of the project. That's no problem at all because the size of your needle doesn't doesn't have anything to do with your stitch. It's all in the control of your hand, Debbie. So you can use whatever size needle you are comfortable with. You will just find that if you are using like a size nine, that's a longer needle, you're not going to be able to get as small of a stitch. And but beginners usually start with a size nine or a 10. After you've been hand quilting for a while, you will find that you will use an 11 or a 12. The only problem with using a size 12 needle is the hole is very, very, very small on that and very, very, very difficult to thread. <laughs> but I use an 11 and a 12 the majority of the time. I'm using a 10 right now, but... Normally, I use an 11 or a 12. It's a short needle. It's a stronger needle because just because of the length of it, it ends up being stronger than the longer one. Do you use beeswax on your thread? Um, not on the hand quilting thread that I use because the Guterman already does have the wax on it, so you don't need it as much. Uh, now, when I do embroidery, I use the beeswax on my embroidery thread, but not so much on my hand quilting thread. Unless I find that I've got, you know, one that seems to be wanting to, you know, tangle and knot up, then I will use the beeswax. So. Yes, you can go from a nine to a 12, from a 10 to an 11. It doesn't, that doesn't make any, any difference. Yeah, I'm gonna thank God I got <laughs> tiny fingers. Yes. Um, Danielle is starting out with a size 10. Only because, you know, a size nine is just just too too long to get a stitch that you will be be happy with. It's the way I look at it. So I had her start out with a size 10. But and you, you know, it does look really, really small, but you you get used to using that size needle, so. Yeah, for my hand sewing stuff that I, I already had needles for for hand sewing, my needles are not much larger than this, so it wasn't really that much of a adjustment for me. But a lot of people you will see, and that's why I'll go back to that tip again about, you know, trying to quilt and of course, like I said, if you are quilting on a frame, it is different than quilting in a hoop because you cannot, and my fingers are slippery, um, you cannot, you know, turn the fabric in a quilting frame. You can turn your hoop so you can always have that you can quilt towards yourself because Wait, you are not putting strain on your hand and don't have it in that awkward position. When you are hand quilting on a frame, you learn to quilt toward yourself, away from yourself, to the right and to the left, and diagonally. Much different than, than in, a, in a hoop or without a hoop just in your lap. Ooh, pretty. Yes, isn't that nice? Yes, and they're nice and small. You gotta hold it up farther, I can't see it. Or you must be, what color thread are you using? Uh, white. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's gonna, this line right here. Yep, I can see it. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. <laughs> Mona says, not with my man hands. Now, you'd be surprised, Mona. There are men that hand quilt. <laughs> so, what is the largest size project 
do you hand quilt and how long does it take you? Oh, I love that question. <laughs> You're going to get my, my standard answer on the last part of that. But the largest size project I have hand quilted is a an oversized king. <laughs> and um, how long does it take you until it's finished? <laughs> I was going to say, no, thank you. Yeah, it's... um. It all depends upon, you know, what design you are quilting, just like, you know, on a long arm and everything. It's It all depends on what, how densely and whatever you are quilting it on the length of time. I have journals that I have kept track on, you know, most everything that I do that I can go back and I can tell you exactly how many hours on a specific quilt it did take me, but I don't, I don't have that now and it really is it all depends on how much quilting you are doing on it and yeah got any good suggestions on getting the needle out of the thread out i mean out thread. of the fabric well that's when you need to have a tip on your finger and if you don't have one of those if you have uh the band-aids that are the the textured flexible Sometimes wrapping one of those Girls. around, okay, you've got that. <laughs> yeah, that should that should help, but it looks like you don't have the Band-Aid up far enough on your finger. <laughs> no, because I got it over a boo-boo. Oh, okay. But that will help sometimes. But but yeah, you really need to find... Um, and I got, a, to I got in a fight with a uh, can of olives yesterday and I lost. And again, making sure that you, uh, before you try pulling it, and I'll show that again, that you push your needle all the way to the end of the eye so you have more needle to grab onto to pull through. That also helps. And um, I, I'm sorry that I couldn't give you a specific answer on time because there is... Like I said, that just, that varies. And if you're just going by hours, you know, you just keep, you know, track and you kind of can tell how long, you know, it takes you to do something, but it may take, you know, years because you may not work on it every day. It may get set to the side and you work on something else because my very first quilt that I ever made and I'm hand quilting is not finished yet because I keep putting it to the side and working on other stuff. So, um, Andrea, I think I'm going to invest in a pair of those. She said needle nose jewelry players is what she uses when the needle is being stubborn in the fabric. Yeah, they do have what is called a needle puller also. It's a little thing with a little, it, it goes right, it grabs the needle and has a little thing on it that tightens and you can pull your needle through. I, I used to have some of those. I probably still have a couple, but I know a gal the one time was having a problem and asked, do you still have any of those? I said, I sure do. And she came over and got one and said it was a lifesaver. But <laughs> you like that answer. Okay, Tracy. Yeah. It's one of those, one of those ones. I always love when somebody asks me, how long does it take? <laughs> I always say, until it's finished. <laughs> but <laughs> exactly. And needle nose jewelry pliers is what I use. Yeah. When the needle is stubborn. Yeah. I have found that usually, like I say, except for some reason, my 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 fingers seem to be a little little on the slick side this evening. My first quilt is still in progress of hand quilting, right, Jean? Yes, but that's that's because you have a tendency not to work on it, Debbie. <laughs> I'm trying to think what year you started that. Was it 2016, 2017? Had to be around there, I'm thinking. But I have ones older than that, so don't feel bad. Doesn't mean I haven't gotten several done in the meantime. It's just, yeah, I have ones. Okay, that so I'm down here into the center corner now. All the way down to the end of the corner? Okay. Now yep. I want you to go the opposite direction and do the long one the opposite direction. So you're making an X across that. Okay, so... Huh? Huh? 
Okay. Because right here, I'm down into the center where my, like where my other designs go into play now. So yeah, you're you're at the end of your box. You're at the end of your square. Yes. Yes. So uh, now I want you to go up into the opposite corner and go the opposite direction. So you've got you're forming an X across it. Okay. So now I'll come over here. No. And go across or something? No, or? no, no, no. Not straight across, diagonally. Like a half square triangle. Okay. Got it? I think so. The opposite corner from what you just did and coming coming down right through the middle. Let me see if do 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 wait. Doing it wrong. Okay, I'm trying to show you if okay. I can get. In. See, this one is going all the way across this way. Now you go yes. up that other one and go all the way across that way, and it'll. Okay, form so it. now grab another needle, then another threaded needle to cut, do that. You don't have another one threaded. Yeah, I got another one threaded. I was okay. just kind of yeah. lost because yeah. what do I do with this one then? Oh, well, you have to do a knot. Let me show you how to do that. Okay, I'm going to stay. And I'm going to do it right here, and I'll just start in the middle. Because say that I've run out of thread, okay? You have to be able to do your finishing knot wherever you are. So you are going to take your needle, hold your thread. I'm trying to get my hand out of the way. And kind of like you were going to do a French knot, right down at the bottom, you're going to wrap around your needle twice. And my hand is in the way to show that. And then you are going to lay your needle flat and bring, you know, ah, I'm not going to be able to catch that there. Bring it up while holding that knot right down close to the bottom of your thread. And of course, it moved on me. Okay. So now you've got a little knot just like you kind of started with. You're going to okay. take the needle and put it right back in that hole of that stitch that you just came out of and take it between the layers the same way you started, but take it in the direction of what you already have done stitching and take it again about the length of the needle. Okay. Point, you are going to pull that through and let that knot pop. You'll hear that pop and it's buried between the layers of your quilt. And then you can cut that and take it over to where you need to begin quilting again. That's called burying your knot. Sorry, I forgot that you hadn't seen how to do that yet. <laughs> I was like, but mom, I'm missing a step somewhere. I was going to say that's a very important step. We don't want knots showing on our quilt. 2017, I thought so, Debbie. Yeah, I have pink needle nose pliers. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Why wouldn't I? Oh my, I have, I have pink tools out here. <laughs> oh, and Debbie says, I've also done other hand quilting projects since and completed. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. Okay, brushing some stuff off there. So now I don't have much thread on this needle, but I am going to go ahead and act as if, I'm, and then I will put you back in, Danielle. But okay. I Going to show starting again because I just did a knot there. So now it'd be like, okay, I rethreaded another needle and I'm ready to complete where I stopped. So I'm just bringing my needle up. I've already got the knot on the end. And I'm bringing it up my stitch length away from where I ended. And I'm going to pop that knot through and it's buried between the layers. Just always make sure you're not coming through the back when you're doing that, that you are staying between the layers of your quilt. Yeah, and I just checked that because I had to back out of it. And then you just continue on again like you Pop were. goes the weasel. <laughs> and after you get part of that done, um, what time is it? We are going to move over to the heart so I can show you how to do that. So, do, do you want to go ahead and move over to the heart? Yeah. 
which you can just leave your needle. This is called parking your needle. Okay. I'm just leaving it in there, parking my needle there. And I'm going to take my thread and wrap it in a figure eight around it so that when you pick it up, you don't end up unthreading and pulling your, your thread out. You just park it there to be able to pick up and continue on where you left off and you will use another needle in your other place, other section. And sorry about the ads. <laughs> oh, but and um, Unfortunately, it's Melissa, out of your control. Melissa Makes Quilts is here. I don't think I saw you earlier if you were there. Welcome, welcome. She says, yay, I have pink needle nose pliers too. We match. Yes. It's like my, I have my, my own tools and yeah, my, I don't have to worry about my husband getting into them and taking them because he doesn't want to use pink tools. <laughs> <laughs> so now you are going to take the top of your hoop off and yes. And I'm going to bring you back in, Danielle. Sorry. Oh, no worries. So we're both here. And I do just put, like you were showing how it makes a nice necklace. That is where I put my hoop as I change it. <laughs> so, and you're going to slide over to where your heart is. And hoop that the same way that I had showed you. Make sure that if you have any threads parked here, you're not catching them in the in the side of your oop, whoops and you will be a little close to the edge there so just get that as well as you can because we did not over oversize our backing and batting and you do make sure that everything is tight when you first put it in the hoop because that is what ensures that you don't have anything not flat on the back. So it's always taut when you put it in your hoop to begin. And you take your hand and you rub it on the bottom to make sure you don't have any pleats or ruffles or bumps or whatever that, that you got in there. And then you tighten it down not completely tight but tight enough that it's holding everything in there and then you take your hand and you push it down and you kind of have to put your thing your hoop back on there you check to make sure you've got that like a cat took a nap and then you tighten your hoop and definitely make sure you got plenty of give in there because you don't want to bend the needle Yes. And if one of your safety pins happen to be, which there's one there, but it was okay, happen to be where your hoop is going on, remove that safety pin. Don't don't have it in between your your frame and your other. So now I have, and I don't know if you can see, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you real quick. I'm gonna gonna remove so I can show you what we are doing with this. And this isn't going to show up as well. But what you are going to do is you are going to hand quilt around your entire heart. I only did one side so I could show what we are doing with the echo quilting on that. I haven't done the other side so I could be showing you that tonight. But you are going to start. And when you are doing a curve, you always want to be doing the outside of the curve, not working from the inside because it's harder to get your needle to finagle that way. <laughs> so you want to work with the curve going around the outside part of it, not working from the inside out on curves. And so when you get that threaded, which don't pay, I decided I wanted a grid inside my heart. So that's added in there for just because I don't want a plain heart in the middle and I didn't want to shadow quilt in the middle of it. So and uh, I showed up a little late. That's quite all right. You're never late. There's always the replay. And Giovanna says, I'm off to bed. And my pointer's in the way. It is 1 a.m. And I need your ugly sleep. <laughs> Thank you, Giovanna. Have a great sleep. And I'm glad that you joined us. What's the pink thing on the needle? That's my thread. <laughs> it's wrapped around the needle because that's where I ended with it. See, like I parked the other one. 
Now, that's just my thread ready to go. And this one is the other echo quilting that is around it. But I'm going to be using this one right now because we are going to be... Yes, I did mark mine with a um, a fabric pencil, not a regular pencil. More of a chalk lead type pencil than a regular pencil. And that was shown in the, uh, the first... Um, Part one of the, the very first series. You can always go back and watch how we did all of our, our marking on the replay of that. But it was, it just happened to have it. It was done with this pencil. It is a lighter weight. It comes out more easily than a regular pencil. It is the bone. There is also sole line. They are very much the same. That is what I use. And you mark it with a light hand, not heavy. Night, Giovanna. And uh, Mona says, okay, I thought was a new needle stop. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's just, just where I showed how you park your needle and wrap your wrap your thread around it so you don't get your, which these over here have a little, little long and I kind of left them funny. But it should be wrapped like this one down there. Then you don't have to worry about it getting caught in anything or or that. And it's like all of a sudden you're, you're pulling, you know, Un unthreading your needle and losing your needle and everything else, mm -hmm. which we don't want to find needles laying around. Okie dokie. Okay. So I am hooped and my center is loosey goosey. All right. So I actually started at the, well, that's the, that's just the closed captions over. I, you can see it. I can't maybe or whatever, but I started at the inside point of the heart and came down around this way, right on your drawn line and quilted that first. You're going to do the entire heart outlining it. Okie dokie. But if you just want to do a portion of it so that you can see then how you go approximately after you've done that, you're going to go without any marking. You're just going to you know, eyeball it, you're going to go approximately a quarter inch out and you are going to echo quilt your heart and you're going to keep echo quilting all the way until you fill that complete square around your heart. And you will find that you will come to, you know, where, okay, there isn't room to go around it anymore. You just go in the section that there is and continue echo quilting until you have filled the square up. And that, of course is going to be homework. You're going to finish your grid on the one that we just did. And you are going to do the heart. And then we will have to come back next week and show how we do the the other two sections. Or just yeah, show our progress. Good. Because you've got the curve and everything, you'll be able to do that. But, but we will come back and show the bro progress and see if there are any questions or anything like that next Wednesday night. And I'm going to, I'm going to throw you back in here. All righty. There you are. So, and I am continuing around on this side where I left it so that I would be able to do that. See, I'm having a problem with a slippery. I need new, I need new fingertips, but they are hard to find anymore they have made them different and they don't grip the needle at all it's hard to find the old red ones that were really good that i used all the time and they come they're actually for um machine quilting so they come for you know one for each finger and it's like so you only have a couple that are the right size for your index finger and those work the best, but they are hard to find anymore. And again, on the rocking, it's just like a rocking chair. You rock the rocking chair back. You have your index finger underneath there that you're pushing up. You have your thumb on the top that you're pushing down. And that is what regulates your stitch length. Quasar says, yeah. 
<laughs> and if I had a good and new finger gripper, I wouldn't be having the problems that I'm having pulling my needle out. It would be much easier. Yeah, it seems like I'm having not having as many problems as long as I am only doing like two stitches right now. It seems like if I do three, I have a harder time pulling it out. And see, for me, I'm just, it's just, I mean, it's just automatic that I usually do five or six. I've been known to put nine on at a time on a needle, but. And again, it could be also the fact that I'm just still really new at this, so. Yes, it does take practice and time. Come on. Get on through there. Well, Donna, I didn't see you pop on either. How long have you been there without me knowing it? <laughs> Hey, Donna. How are oh, you doing, love? I'm Donna. This, thanks, Jean. And I'm like, well, where have you been all this while? <laughs> oh. But yeah, if you have if you have any more questions, don't hesitate to ask. Like I said, this is really hard to to teach on a on a limited camera view. If I was a multi-million, you know, operation, I could have zoom in and everything, but I do not have that. So, this is okay. actually this is actually the third position that I have had this camera. Yeah, I missed a little bit of a gap in here. Oh well, don't worry about it. You know. But overall, I'm doing pretty good. Well, on my line. have this as as a sampler to go back and go. That was my very first hand quilting. Look how much I have improved. Yeah, on the other like I got a little bit of a gap in here, but overall, so far, I'm doing pretty good and keeping on my line. Yeah, I see Grand you have uh, you have little daisies drawn in there. Yeah, I needed something to fill in the corners of that block. Is that the one with the heart? Yep. I put a daisy on each corner. Well, you know what you're going to have to do now? You have to I'm echo gonna have to quilt those daisies. daisies. You're going to have to echo, echo quilt around the heart and the daisies. Yep. That should be fun. Oh, yeah, especially within a week. <laughs> you don't have to have it all done. I say the daisies may not be done by the by next week, Mom. <laughs> I, I wouldn't expect them to be. Goodbye, Mona. Thank you very, very much for joining Bye, us. Bye, Mona. And yeah, Donna says, LOL, I came in late. Well, I'm I'm glad it wasn't that you've just been there the whole time and I never, ever, you know, acknowledged you or saw you. So <laughs> that, that's good to know. What well, that one got a little bit of skin. On your underneath finger? Yeah. Didn't go all the way through, but I could feel it trying to take that like that top layer of skin. <laughs> but you will find that over time it just becomes second nature to you. You will still, I mean, there are times I go, oh, that stitch was a little bit bigger than that. Do I go back and take it out? No. I'm not perfect. I don't claim to be perfect. Nobody is perfect. Yeah, the thimble is supposed to protect my finger, but yeah, I think I need a thimble on each finger. Because <laughs> I'm poking all the fingers that don't have a thimble. I was looking at my hand thinking it was yours there for a minute. <laughs> It's like, no, that's me. <laughs> Silly goose. So, Jim, are you learning anything? Is this is this inspiring you to give hand quilting a try? Now, hand stitching is different than hand quilting. I have also taught hand stitching. That is a different stitch. That I actually enjoy doing. A diff different process than hand quilting. Much different. But yeah. it has helped me out with the whole, like, understanding of this. 
Yes. Because I love doing hand stitching. Um, I, you know, when everybody talks about EPP and hexes, I do not do EPP. I do hexes. I, I hand piece them just, you know, the way you would back in the old day when, when a lot of things were hand pieced, it's, you know, the same way as you would hand piece a block. I hand piece the hexes. Yeah. I want to make myself like one that's like use hexagons to make myself a, a, uh, a to hand sew a grandmother's garden type of of a like small quilt yeah if you if you've noticed the banner that is on the top of my um facebook group the uh kept in stitches and friends uh-huh that is the hexes done hand piecing yeah i noticed that and everything i've always loved that pattern it's one of my favorite patterns. I don't know what is what it is, but I love hexagons. That could actually also be because I'm on. also. It could also be because I'm also a beekeeper. Yeah. Yes. And he, and hexagons remind me of beehives. Right. But that that little quilt sits on top of my um, grandmother's treadle sewing machine. Awesome sauce. And Jim says, I might try. I always like to learn. Need a hoop first. Uh, if you're going to get a, a hoop, make sure you don't get an embroidery hoop. Make sure it's a quilting hoop. There is a difference. Quilting hoop is a much thicker hoop. And it, um, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't close exactly the same. They appear to like they do, but they really don't. Yeah, I actually have embroidery hoops and this ear is like much meatier. Yes. Like a lot heavier duty. Yep. Well, that's the one that I sent you, right? Yes. It is. It is. Yeah, it is. A, a higher grade hand quilting hoop, which it is a, and I always say it wrong. Uh, it's Vicky, a Frank, I'm jealous. Frank Frank Edmonds is the brand. They make good hoops. I'm jealous. Vicky is working on the grandmother's garden flower garden right now. Oh, awesome! I want to do a, on my, 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 you know, lifetime bucket list, whatever, when it has to do with, with quilting, I want to do a cathedral window by hand, not by machine. Okay. So once I get down here to my bottom of my heart, then I'm going to come up and echo around that, or am I going to come all the way back up? Around the well, heart. no, like I only did it. I only did it halfway, so I would have the other half to show this evening. Oh, okay. I, I wasn't showed, for sure. I did if part, I... so I would have to show what we were doing, and I left the other part so I could actually do it. <laughs> okay. You know, one of one of the you know things you have to do as the teacher, not the student. <laughs> yes. Well, that's the reason I figured out to ask before I got actually got yeah. down there. Now so. you can go ahead and do outline your whole entire heart. I, mean, I still got the other half of my heart to do so. But if you I want, just wanted to ask if I ever you could, you can, as I was saying, you could do part of it so you can can do part of the echo tonight oh, before, okay. before we go off. So you, so you're sure that you've got it for how you're supposed to be doing it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Did that not sound like mother daughter, huh? Yes. <laughs> Are you doing a scrappy grandmother's flower garden or is it is it planned, Vicky? I've done the cathedral window and it was a real treat to do by hand. Yes. 
I love Cathedral Window. I think that was I one had... of the that was actually one of the first quotes I'd done. Yeah, I've got I've got one block of one done. <laughs> I actually did like an entire lap size quilt. Well, it wound up being like a little bit small for a lap size for me. And then there was a lady local to me that was asking for stuff for her daughter for uh for Christmas one year. And it was the same year I did my cathedral window and I did it all in flannel, which wound up being a heavy quilt, by the way. Oh yes. And I kind of told her, I'm like, you know, I'm like because it was like all in pinks and purples and flowers. Uh-huh. And so I told her, I'm like, you know what? I'm like, you can come on over and pick this up. So I wound up just giving it to her for her daughter for Christmas. Awesome. And Carol Rouchaw says that she has also done a cathedral window all by hand. Yep. Mine was by machine. Oops. Yeah, I was going to say they have the methods for doing it by machine now, but. I, I yeah, would, I used a uh, Jenny Dunn's method for doing cathedral window, and I did it by machine. See, I got a knot in my thread there, and I am getting that, getting it out. Here we go. We got it. That happens once in a while, just like in any stitching. Yep. It may be more than a quarter, but it's okay. What your echo? Yes. Yeah. Just, just be consistent on whatever it is. That's what. That's the main thing. That's like in your. Uh, I don't know how I managed to do that, but I just went with the wrong finger pushing on my needle. It was like I realized that right away. And I am down to where I need to knot my thread again because I'm at that point. I'm all the way around my heart. So I'm going to show that one more time. And it you just take and pull your thread over to the side as if you were doing a French knot in embroidery. Wrap the thread around your needle twice. And because you're not sticking it through and doing a French knot, you have to lay your needle down flat. Pick the end of it up. Hold so with your fingernail so that knot ends up down close to that and then you are sticking your needle in right where you came up with that stitch back through burying it between the layers of your quilt and you want to make sure that when you bury it between the layers of your quilt that it is on the underside or in the middle of the batting so that if you're using a colored thread it doesn't show through on the top and then you just pull and you will hear instantly when that knot pops through Ow. Ow. <laughs> We're not doing the down out up uh, method. <laughs> oh, I just did. Oh. Yep. That one went through. And, and like I said, uh, we did not originally mark this heart with the grid in it. I just decided that I wanted a grid in my heart that will set that heart off from the echo quilting that is done around it. So that is how I will be doing that. I thought of using the inside of the heart as, um, um, which you don't have anything on the inside of yours yet, Danielle. You might want to do that. You can use it kind of like the label for your sampler. You can put, you know, hand, hand quilting, you know, step by step, the date and your name. That's and, a good idea. And then, and then you will have, you will know that that is what you did to learn to hand quilt and we'll have that as a keepsake as you go on. Yes, ma'am. But I had thought about doing that there, but. But I have several of these from teaching <laughs> several classes in hand quilting. So. And Vicki says she's doing a scrappy for my main quilt, but this pillow is a traditional flower garden. All right. And we are past the hour, but we will we'll see how Danielle is doing on her echo. Echo, echo, echo. Dude, Some okay. I... Echo or shadow quilting, it is the same thing. You are just 
yeah. going around whatever it is that you did until you yeah. get to the, the edge. I did okay so far. Mm hmm. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Had a few large stitches, but hey. The biggest one was when I poked my finger underneath. I'm wondering what size safety pins those actually are. I'm looking at mine and yours. I think they're the correct size. They're not they're not big, are they? Um from about the tip of your finger to your first first bend? Uh about the tip of my finger to almost to right around the my middle knuckle. Ooh, they might be the the larger because you want yeah. I know that that I got them, but I didn't have to to measure from you know I didn't yeah. know it doesn't doesn't say which are the small and which are the large. I didn't have it to look at, but but anyway, you want. Yeah, the, I do have some that are small smaller. One. Yeah, you want the small curved ones, not the larger curved ones. Um, and Jim says yeah, I'm have... forward to next week's session. Thank you for the instruction and have a good night, everyone. Thank you, Jim, and thank you for joining us again. It's great. Now, to I see do you. have these, Mom. Would these be fine to use? Hold it up farther. I can't see it. Uh, I I probably wouldn't. Okay. I got them a while back, and I don't remember what for, and I've never even used them. And they're probably more costly and not as many of them either, and it takes a lot of pins. So. <laughs> yeah, I mainly thought that they were just cute. Yep. <laughs> And yeah. I have heard a lot of people talking about oh using curved needles for for a base for a pin basting and yep I think I tried them once and wasn't really all that thrilled with it and went back to just using normal pins. <laughs> oh, but I'm uh, like this takes longer to try to open and close these things and, and all than what it does just is to um, take a chance of sticking myself with a normal and, needle and and that's all a matter of getting used to too I don't have a problem at all doesn't hurt my fingers I don't stick myself it's just automatic and so yeah now Debbie has a problem she likes to use the thing you know that you can open and close them with instead of her finger but. Have a good night, Jim. Oh, but yeah, it takes a little, little longer than what you think when you are, when you are hand quilting, but it is relaxing after you get used to it. Yes. In the very beginning, it might not be as relaxing, but that's because you're stressing out and thinking, overthinking it. My, my biggest stressful part of it of the whole process so far has just been like worried about doing the rocking stitch the right way but overall i'm in i'm really enjoying this so yeah you're you're doing awesome you thank you, you. That rocking stitch down no problem i had a good teacher and and you know it was good that you did bend those two needles like you did in the beginning because you found out okay why <laughs> yeah and that way there anyone that has not done this before and everything can learn from my boo-boos right it's like okay let me see what you're doing i was able to see that right away and i'm going oh yeah you just need to loosen that fabric <laughs> that's that's why that's one of the first steps is learning that yep don't have it don't have it taught in there good <laughs> You didn't get that tool from me, did you, Debbie? You did purchase your own, correct? She says, yep, that tool is good and saves the fingertips. And Melissa makes quilts, says, after a while, I put Band-Aids on my fingers if they get sore from too many pins. From the safety pins or too many pricks while you're hand quilting? Now, because I, and I keep in my, in my little hand quilting kit, the um, liquid Band-Aid is what I will put on the tips of my underneath fingers when they're getting sore. And as Debbie Williams will tell you, because she didn't think and she got the spray. Yeah, you don't want the spray liquid bandage for that. <laughs> you want the liquid liquid bandage for that. So. 
Where are you, Debbie? You haven't answered my question. Yeah, I was making sure I was fully prepared for tonight. <laughs> you thought you were going to have some boo-boos, did you? I was like, I know how brutal I can be at times, and I've poked myself plenty of times. I was making sure I got plenty of Band-Aids in here in case I needed them. Oh, you don't use a thimble. Oh, yeah, I don't. I always use a thimble because a needle can go right through a Band-Aid. I can't remember, but I know you were with me. I The reason I was asking is because I can't find mine. So I didn't know if I gave it to you or not, Debbie. <laughs> it's like I was looking for it to show, okay, what you could use for closing and opening your pins if it, you know, bothered your your hands. And I couldn't find it. It wasn't where where it's it's stored. <laughs> and I thought, oh, maybe I gave it to Debbie because I don't use it. Couldn't Couldn't remember. That's why I was asking, because then I could stop looking for it. <laughs> and Vicky says, as a beater, I now have calluses on my fingers. Yes, I get I get such thick calluses on mine that I actually have to take a fingernail clipper and clip them off and let it start over or I can't. I cannot feel the needle coming through and then I can't get my stitch regulated correctly because I need to feel that needle come through. Debbie will sometimes refer to it as looking like hamburger meat. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's when you kind of kind of hide them. But I don't go out any place anymore, so nobody really sees them but me. <laughs> and that's okay. But that's when you take a break and you and you work on something else for a little while. But okay, let's let's see how you're doing. We're going on twenty minutes after the hour. Okay, dokie. You got a low camera up here. Low. Here, wait a minute. I'm gonna I'm gonna remove mine so we can get yours closer. There you go. Awesome. Very good. Yes. Yeah, I got a little bit of white stitches down here on the echo. That's, that's when right. I poked my finger. Other than that, I think I did pretty good. Yeah, your your safety pins look bigger than mine. Yeah, they're pretty big. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yep. See. Yep. Yeah, they're they're the they're the larger ones. Sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. They're, they're still usable, just not the not the ones I intended you to have. But <laughs> it covers more ground. <laughs> Debbie says, "Oh, maybe a likely possibility. It's 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 real good when neither one of us can remember, huh?" <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that are wondering, Debbie Williams is a friend that lives close enough by, not, you know, in the same same town or whatever, but close enough that she comes over once a week to the stitching cottage. I have taught her to, to quilt. She learned from me. I've taught her to do applique, other things along the way. And she gets to come over once a week to the stitching cottage and we stitch together. Sometimes we just talk. We don't get much stitching done. You know how that goes. But but that is um, who Debbie is. She is a good friend, a very good friend, has been there in good times and bad times. So, but I appreciate it. But that's that's why I go, oh, it's pretty bad when neither one of us can remember. But <laughs> oh, so I hope and I'm going to go ahead and bring us both in now i will move my camera back to are we calling it good for the night or we are calling it good for the night and um what you need to do is just get as much done on whichever i mean if you want to finish one square and not the other or you know do part on both of them so that you have more done and we can do a, a progress report on it um and if you come across any questions as you are doing that then you can ask that next week and anybody else that has been in the chat if they come up with anything else they want to ask about or whatever um 
yeah, that that will be <laughs> what we will do next week. We will have just a little refresher and go over the progress that was been made, see how Danielle feels about her learning to hand quilt in a quick period of time and not one on one, but just being what she can see, you know, on the live. But um and Auntie Debbie goes it was unopened. Sometimes she takes me to help her buy a puppy. Laugh out loud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then she, and then that Debbie keeps checking on one she saw when she was there and to see if he's still available. And he, I don't know if he still is now or whether you've checked, Debbie, but it's like I keep telling her, well, go back and get him. He's waiting for you. <laughs> but yes but thank you everyone very much for popping on with us and like i said we will just do a wrap up next wednesday night at seven o'clock and that will end this series and we will see what i come up with after that if there's anything that you would like to see in a series or something done like this let me know and i will see if i can schedule it in for you so take care everyone thank you very much danielle i hope you had a good time rocking it tonight oh definitely thank you and we will see you all back next wednesday night the two of us together i will be going live on friday and have something not new something old that i'm bringing back out to work on on friday on the sewing machine and that has to do with quilting not hand stitching so look forward to that take care everyone have a great Bye. evening and remember in the meantime i can keep you in stitches Bye bye everyone <laughs>